Okay, we have written another interesting integral from the UNSW integration be 2024, problem two. We have the integral from minus ln pi to ln pi, sine e to the x minus sine e minus x dx. Okay, this is actually my second time doing this one. My first way of doing this was just using odd functions, and that's probably gonna be the quickest way to do this. But I actually wanna see if I could do this one without using odd functions, even though it's gonna be a longer method. To get started with this, I actually want to kind of just manipulate the bounds. Noticing I can take this minus 1 and bring it into the exponent on the pi. So what that's going to allow me to do with exponent properties is actually just rewrite this as natural log of 1 over pi. And the reason I do that is because I want to do a u substitution. I'm going to make my u here for e to the x, knowing that's going to simplify this expression. But really over here, e to the minus x, this is also, we could write this as 1 over e to the x. So we kind of have this symmetry going on where we have the reciprocal here, and then we have the reciprocal inside the bounds here. So let's see how this is going to work when I do this. We'll say, we'll set u equal to e to the x. And for e to the minus x, I can write, we have a, we'll get a value for this. We can write this as 1 over u. And then we'll take a derivative here. So for my du value, we're going to have just e to the x dx. I could have taken a natural log here, but it doesn't really matter. I can just rearrange this and solve for dx, and we'll get du over e to the x, but e to the x is just u, so we can have this as our value for d to the x. And so we'll just go ahead, we'll make the substitution. So first, plugging in ln pi in here, e to ln pi, then we're just going to pi for the upper bound. e to the ln 1 over pi gives me 1 over pi for the lower bound. Then again here, we're going to have sine u, and this one's going to become minus sine 1 over u. And then for dx, we're going to have du over u. Actually, let's write this as 1 over u du. But now that we have this case where we have like 1 over u here and here, u there, and then we have reciprocals on the bounds, we're going to do another substitution. For this substitution, let me make a little more space. We'll substitute, we'll use t. So I'm going to set t equal to 1 over u. And then doing this, we'll solve for u, and we'll have u equals 1 over t. We'll take a derivative here on u, so for our du, this is going to become minus 1 over t squared dt. So then I'll go ahead and substitute, but this is pretty nice because when we put pi in here, this becomes 1 over pi, and then we put 1 over pi and we just get pi, so we kind of just flipped our bounds around. Then for sine u, this becomes sine 1 over t, and then 1 over u is just t, so this becomes sine t. Then for du, we just get all this stuff over here, so let me just write that in minus 1t squared dt. But I can take this minus sign here, bring it out front and use to swap the bounds back. So we can write this, now we're going from 1 pi to pi. Oh, sorry, I just noticed I missed one term. We had this 1 over u here, and we have 1 over u is t. So what I need to do is add that one in. That's gonna give me, I'm just gonna write that in, we'll have a t right here for this term. But then I'll take this t and cancel with one of these. This becomes 1 over t. And what I'm trying to do is get this integral to look like this one. Well, you notice we kind of have this in the wrong order here. We have 1 over u here, 1 over t here. Well, I can just flip this by changing the sign, bringing a minus sign out here and putting a minus in front of this one. But then to see what we've done, let's just change the variable. Let's change this back to u to compare to this. So when I reread this all in u, because it's a definite integral, I can change the variable. But then what happened? Everything here, this is all exactly the same as what we have right here. The only difference is we have this minus sign in front. So what I can do is actually we'll just label it to make it clear. This integral here, I'll call this one i. So then this one down here, I can call this one minus i. So what we've done is we've manipulated the integral i into this form minus i. So we can create a little equation and we can say just that i equals minus i, where i is what we want to solve. That's our goal. That's the same thing as this right here. So if I just add an i on both sides here, this is going to cancel here. And we have another equation, 2i equals 0. But for 2i to equal 0, that just means that i equals 0. And so for our final solution of this integral i, we just get 0. Okay, so there you have it, kind of a longer method, but we still get back to the same solution we got in the other video. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a good day.